welcome child of god welcome back to my youtube channel thank you thank you everyone for what you're doing in this family god sees and may you be blessed in the name of jesus if this is your first time here welcome i'm so blessed that god has led your steps to this family and i know that what he has for you will be permanently given to you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah thank you so much for preaching the gospel on this channel and this is through your comments. Whenever you share your comments, your stories, your testimonies, other brothers and sisters are encouraged and they are praying more because of what you are doing. May God reward you abundantly. Thank you for praying for me too. I need that. Hallelujah. We all need prayer. So I'm praying for you and remember to pray for me too. When you are in a desperate situation, I want you to do these eight things. Follow these eight steps and pray aggressively, your life and your story won't be the same again. Hallelujah. This will be so interesting for those of you who are looking for a job. Maybe you have gone for an interview and you haven't heard from them yet. You have applied for a visa and there's no answer yet. You are in business. You are looking for funds. You want marriage restoration. You are in a relationship and you want God to order your steps. Is this person the right one for me, Lord? Hallelujah. We ask all those questions because as a child of God, you are a child. That's why you are called a child of God. And you have to go to the Father like a child, asking stupid questions. You see how children are so vulnerable. Children just say anything in the presence of their parents and they will ask any question because they are free. So that's what we do in the presence of God. We go there to ask him of anything. Say, Lord, I'm going through this. It's tough for me. Help me. And this is not only for those I've mentioned, but if you are in debt, your finances are not looking good, or you are sick in the body, God is everything. And he can supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Are you going through satanic attacks? Is it nightmare after nightmare? And now you feel paralyzed. Every time you want to go and sleep, you feel scared and you can't pray anymore. You are discouraged because every time you pray, it's like it's getting worse. God is lifting you up. And that's why I've created this video so that you can follow these eight steps and you'll be out of there. I want you to pray aggressively. Don't just watch this video and continue to complain. There's a solution here. We are all doing something. Hallelujah. God is not going to do everything for you. He wants you to pray because there's an opposer. And God is not going to pray for you. He has given you everything. He has given you the word. He has empowered you. So let me take you straight to step number one. Number one, I want you to get into the habit of praying for yourself. Laying hands on yourself. The Bible says that you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Is anything sick in your life? Sickness is not only physical. Your bank account can be sick. Your children not doing well in school. Someone in your family can be going through a problem and you are there. You can also pray for yourself by laying your own hand on yourself and let the Holy Spirit of God work through your hands, into your body, into every area of your life. Because there's power when you lay hands on the sick. So the same hand that you can lay on somebody else, lay it on yourself. Place it on your forehead. Place it where it's painful. Praying for your children. You can lay hands on them. You can take your laptop. Pray for it. Lay your hands on the, on the laptop. Lay your hands on the bank account. Lay your hands on the purse. You can lay hands on anything. Whatever form of sickness is on that thing, God has promised that it will be removed. There will be healing. Hallelujah. Pray for God's anointing, God's goodness to chase after you. Pray for God's anointing to come upon you. And let anything that is a yoke in your life, anything that is a burden, anything that is holding you down, let it be broken by that anointing. You start by asking God to anoint you because yokes cannot break if, if the anointing is not upon you. The first thing you do is to ask God for that anointing. The anointing that breaks every yoke. Pray every morning for fresh oil. Lord, anoint me afresh. And as you'll be praying, the anointing power of the Spirit of God will be breaking every yoke. Hallelujah. If there's any challenge because of that anointing on you, that challenge will come to nothing. This is something that 
many Christians leave to the pastors and say, okay, anointing is only for pastors and prophets. No, you can also ask for God's anointing to be upon you. Hallelujah. Just make sure that your life is in order and you are justified by the blood of Jesus. The anointing comes when you call upon the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit fills your life. That is what empowers you. You start to do things that you cannot do in your own self. Chains begin to break. When you pray, you pray with power. And this is what you want. Number three, I want you to repeat number one. But this time, you will pray with so much intensity. Now you are on fire. Declare things you want to see in your life. What is God saying? What do you think God is saying to you? Even if you see that situation, what do you think God is saying? God is saying you are highly favored. You are exceedingly great. Hallelujah. And these are the things that you start to speak over your own life. Take time to declare. Declare things that are big, not small, because our God is not a small God. You are highly favored. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the land. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and get your blessing there. Start to declare the blessing of the Lord. Anything you want, you speak here. Every time you do warfare prayers, remember to declare the blessing of God. Because after spiritual warfare, you destroy, destroy, destroy. But you have to replant. Make sure that you have planted the good seeds and you have spoken good things. Remember, words come as harvest. So what do you want to see? What is God saying about your life? He says you are highly favored. Believe that and declare it. You don't stop there. Speak what you want to see in your children's lives, in your family, in your business. Are you lacking clients and customers? Speak, declare that you receive more clients, more customers today. This is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I have more clients today. I am in good health today. I receive favor everywhere I go. God has blessed the work of my hands. Everything I touch is blessed. God has given me a new home. You haven't even seen it yet. You don't even have money yet. You start to declare that. I'm moving higher. My visa has been released. I have my documents approved. That tender is given to me because you are a child of God. And wherever your documents are, must go on top. You go further to number four and ask the Lord to send the chariots of fire around your life. Let there be the hedge of fire around you. Because when there's fire around you, the fire of God, evil is consumed. So here you are going to pray that, Lord, release the chariots of fire. Are you going to bed? Ask the Lord to send the chariots of fire. Let your dreams be sweet. We have angels all around us. And the power of the Spirit of God can hover over your life and no evil comes near your dwelling. Hallelujah. No normal human being can go where there's fire. Fire scares people. And in the spiritual realm, you can surround yourself with fire, the fire of God. You can ask God to surround you with a hedge of fire. And number five, you are going to deal with monitoring spirits. All these evil spirits monitoring your life. Wherever you go, someone is watching you. You have to pray against every monitoring spirit. Your prayers are being paralyzed because there are monitoring spirits watching your life. You want to shut their communication. You want to shut whatever they are doing. In Psalm 44, you want to go and read the whole chapter. It's so interesting. The people of Israel were boasting before God, saying, you are the only one. You are the only one, Lord, who is able to rescue us. Remember how you saved our ancestors. Let me read Psalm 44 verse 3 because it's very interesting. I want you to know how God rescues his people and is doing the same right now in your life. The Bible says they did not conquer the land with their swords. It was not their own strong arm that gave them victory. It was your right hand and strong arm and the blinding light from your face that helped them. For you loved them. God will defeat your enemies because of the love he has for you. If you read this scripture, I love the part where the people of Israel are saying it was because of the bright light in your eyes that their enemies were blinded. Because God is holy, he could not stand the evil things they were doing against his people. 
the bright light in God's eyes blinded the enemies and the people of Israel were able to conquer. This is how God can defeat your enemies. Ask him to say the way you did it for these people, do it for me, Lord. Let your bright light shine so much in the eyes of every monitoring spirit. Blind them so that they don't see. Just by that light, you are able to conquer because they will be blinded and they won't see. They won't even know what you are doing. You can pass here and they are standing there because the light in God's eyes has blinded them. Hallelujah. And you can pray freely. You can enjoy your sleep because you have asked God to blind your enemies. You see how the Israelites were boasting that our ancestors, Lord, it means what you did in the old, you can do it for us again. What you did for them, you can do it for me. Let that light blind my enemies. Any monitoring spirit, any ancestral spirit, any familiar spirit following my life, blind them. This is what you are going to do. Hallelujah. And number six, you are going to ask God to give you that authority, to place that authority upon your life. Why am I telling you to ask, ask, ask? The Bible says you do not receive because you do not ask. You cannot keep quiet, zip your mouth, and assume that things will just fall into place. You cannot assume that you have the power of God and you have the authority just because God has written it. You ask for it. As you ask for anointing, you ask for authority. God has promised in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 that he has given you power and authority to use the name of Jesus. So you ask for that authority. Let God give you the authority and you can pray with power. You can pray with confidence that God has given you the authority. It is there, but you have to ask. As you use the word of God, you say, Lord, you have said it in your word. Let this authority be placed upon my life. Hallelujah. Let God give you the authority. Let God empower us with the authority. And then we are able to pray with power. Number seven, ask God to enlarge you. You don't want to remain small. You don't want to be doing the same things and there's no progress. Let stagnation be removed from your life. This anointing to enlarge, to expand, is an empowerment from God. He has said he will empower you to do great things. They that know their God will do exploits, will do great things. Are you doing something that is shrinking? Are you doing something that is going backwards? Do you have a business that is not flourishing? God wants to expand your life. God wants to increase you. Let his supernatural hand be upon you. Be upon everything you are doing. Let there be increase in every area of your life, your finances. Let anything you touch be blessed in the name of Jesus. This is the time on step number seven that you are going to ask God for enlargement. Let God enlarge you, expand you, increase you. Increase does not just come. You ask for increase. If you have a business, you stand to pray for increase. You cannot just think that things are just going to fall in place without your effort. It's spiritual first. Even in business, you have to pray for your business. It's easy to pray when you are sick or when there's a problem in the family. But when it comes to finances, we don't want to pray. You pray for your business. You pray for anything that you are doing, your career. Stand to pray. God, enlarge me, promote me, increase me, expand my territory. Hallelujah. Isn't it exciting? Number eight, ask the angels of the Lord to surround you. Let him dispatch angels of restoration, angels of favor, angels who will go ahead of you and do exploits for you and show you where what is. God is the one who knows. You just ask. Ask for angels of blessings, angels of restoration, angels of favor, angels of abundance, angels of protection. Ask for all these angels. They are your ministering spirits. And God is going to do it. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, you will find that these angels are our ministering spirits. Ministering spirits means that they are your servants. So you can send them to go and bring whatever has been stolen from you. Did you have a dream where you dreamt that something was stolen from you? I had an email like that. Ask the angels of restoration to go and get whatever was stolen in that dream. Let restoration begin in the name of Jesus. Are you going through satanic attacks? Ask for angels of protection. They'll fight the battle for you. 
Hallelujah. They are military angels. And these are eight steps that you can follow if you are in that desperate situation. And let God give you the grace. Thank you so much for watching this video. Watch other videos that I recommend at the end of this video. If this message has been helpful, please give it thumbs up. Continue sharing your testimonies, commenting. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so because you are being part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And stay blessed. I'll see you in the next one.